What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to share with you how to trick tomato plants into producing earlier, bigger harvests that ripen quicker. Let's go! <laughs> It's June 11th here in New Jersey, and I already have tomatoes on my vines getting ready to ripen. The way I grow tomatoes allows me to harvest tomatoes two weeks earlier than usual. The convenient thing about this is not only do they form earlier when you do this, but the tomatoes actually ripen quicker when you use this technique to grow the tomatoes. In order to trick the tomato plant into producing fruit earlier that ripens quicker, what we need to do is reduce the number of growth points, also known as suckers on the tomato plant. So when we remove these, what we're essentially doing is taking all the energy that would go to those suckers that would be wasted in a lot of leaf growth and stuff and redirecting it to the one top and to the rest of the plant. When we do this, we're basically tricking the plant into focusing all of its attention on the production of fruit, on flowers, and on its overall health. So it's kind of like shifting all that attention on to the things that we want. We don't want to just waste all the energy on growth. We want to redistribute that energy into producing flowers and producing fruit that ripens quickly. I'm going to take you over to a tomato plant now that I haven't worked on yet and show you how I trick it into earlier production. Before I do that though, I just want to let you know we got the new merch. This is the summer merch. I think it looks just awesome. I love it so much. Definitely my favorite design ever. So if you guys like the merch, make sure you grab some at jamesprigioni.com. It's only a limited time thing. Let's get over to the tomato we're going to be working on now. Right here is a tomato plant that I haven't done anything to yet. So I'm going to explain and show you how I get this thing to earlier production. So what we first want to do is remove all the suckers. Let's go into what a sucker is or growth point. So at the top of the plant right here, you'll notice this is where the leaves are unfolding. This is where the new growth comes from. But if you look down here, this is also a top as well. So the plant will grow in this direction and keep unfolding. If we leave that on, you'll notice there's a bunch of growth points between each crotch where the stem meets a leaf. In that crotch, we have a sucker or a growth point. So those are all over the plant, if you notice. If we allow these to grow, this plant is going to grow incredibly bushy and it's just going to grow out in all different directions. It's going to have so many points of growth that it's going to focus a lot of its attention just on growth. So what we want to do is go around and remove these suckers or growth points. So the best time to do it is when the plant is young and you can just snap them off just like this. So the first thing we're going to do is go around and remove all these suckers or growth points because they just pull so much energy from the plant. The idea is we want one growth point at the top of the plant. So we're going to move this one too. And then we're just going to continue removing them. All these suckers here. And there's even some up top here. So when we remove all those suckers, now the only growth point is at the top of the plant. So the plant's going to just grow up. That means it's only going to focus its growth at this one area and it's going to have more energy to focus on the production of flowers and ultimately fruit. Now look down here and you'll notice how much different that tomato plant looks after we've finished. The next thing we want to do is get a stake or tie in the ground because this tomato plant needs to be tied to something because we're going to be growing it vertically. So let's do that. I'm going to get a stake in right now. I'm going to move some of these wood chips out of the way and then just get this stake in. It's best to put the stake in before you plant the tomato plant, but this is okay. It's going to get in as deep as I can. And this tomato plant is going to get really tall, so we want a, as tall of a stake as we can get. There we go. That'll work perfect. I think Tuck's getting thirsty. Tuck, where you at, boy? Want a drink? I think Tuck's getting thirsty. He's running around. It's a pretty hot day. He's playing with his toys, but we got these water bottles too. If you guys want to check them out at the website as well. So they're pretty cool with a little grow design, the summer grow design on it. Keeps the water nice and cold. If you guys love seeing talking the videos, just hit the subscribe button and throw some hearts down in the comment for the boss. He's always a part of the videos and we like to try to keep him hydrated out here because if he doesn't have enough water and it gets too hot, this guy loves digging his own holes then. Now that we have our stake in, we're going to start tying our tomato to the post. So what I do is I just take this tomato twine, it's really strong string, and I tie it to my stake, cut a little piece off. I then take these tomato clips, which work amazing. 
the style of tying up tomatoes, whether you do this with a string or with a steak, just works so incredibly well. I don't think I'll ever switch how I do it. So we take these clips like this and we just clip it around our tomato as such, just like that. Then we're gonna go up higher. Best place is like right above one of the knots or the growth points on the bamboo. Tie another piece. And then we're just gonna continue training, clipping and training this tomato up the steak. As it gets tall, I'll probably bring it closer to the steak. Just like that, our tomato is gonna continue growing up the steak nice and strong with only that one growth point right there. So another thing I like to do when the tomatoes are about this height is I like to remove the leaves the lower leaves, about the first foot or two of leaves on the plant. So you'll notice some of these leaves down here, they're a little damaged. These are the leaves that are gonna get uh, infected by things like funguses and early blight first because they're so close to the soil. So when it rains, the soil, uh, the rain splat can splash, splash up to these leaves and then bring in some soil-borne organisms onto these leaves and actually cause some pathogens and some issues. So we're gonna remove those lower leaves, even this one here, that's also gonna help redirect the energy to what we have on the plant, to its growth points, to its flowers, and to the production of that fruit, leading to earlier ripening as well. So here's the tomato plant after we finished. You can see it's thinned up a lot. So removing those lower leaves is also going to open up a lot of airflow, which is gonna also reduce any issues with fungus. After I finish doing all this stuff, I'll take my wood chips, put it back around, the base of my plant like this as a thick mulch to hold in any kind of moisture. If you live in a location that gets very hot and just has extremely strong sun, what you might want to do is when you're tying and printing your tomatoes is leave a sucker about right in the middle of the tomato plant. Leaving one is okay. And the reason we want to have this here is when the sun gets extremely strong, we want a little bit of shade for those tomatoes if you live in a super hot location because if your tomatoes are sitting on the vine and it's and the sun is just beating down on them, especially for your beefsteak tomatoes that take a long time to ripen, they could get something which is called sun scald, which forms these little gray patches on the tomato itself. And it's essentially just sunburn. So in a location that I live, we don't have those kind of issues. It doesn't get that hot and the sun isn't that strong. So I remove these suckers in the center. But again, if you live somewhere maybe down south like Texas or something that gets extreme heat, you may want to leave a sucker every little bit just to help shade those tomatoes a bit. But I don't need it, so I'm going to remove this sucker right here. When your tomatoes get so tall that they start to grow above your steak or your tie, say this tomato right here started to grow so tall that it was all the way at the top, what I could do is come by and pinch off that growth point or that sucker right at the top. And by pinching off that growth point, the only growth point there is, what it will do is it will encourage more fruiting and flowering lower on the plant. So if we have a tomato plant and we remove the only growth point, it's gonna to wanna to send out other ones lower. So when the tomato gets so tall that, you know, it's just higher than your actual steak or your string, you really wanna pinch off that top, that top growth point. But if you're like me and you have the tomato set up on a system like this, I've got these rollers where I could just press a button and it rolls out some more string. This way I can actually lower and lean my tomatoes. When you grow tomatoes like this, it will extend your harvest window by two weeks, which is super valuable. It will also cause the tomatoes that are on the vine to ripen earlier and quicker, which is a great thing too. And another thing is if you plant your tomatoes closely, it will increase your yield so much, it will shock you. The reason for this is basically because if we don't remove the suckers on the tomato plant, say we left like this sucker, right here on the tomato plant. What this sucker will do in time is it will essentially grow into a whole new tomato plant connected to this plant. It's like almost like this plant sprouts a whole new plant on it, which seems like it would be awesome and really convenient, but it's actually not. Because if we allow this to happen all over the plant, then it's just gonna focus so much of its attention on just the production of more growth, more leaves. We don't want that. We want to focus its attention on production on fruit, on flowers. Then we'll have a good harvest on this one plant. 
if we allow all those suckers to grow in all different directions, this tomato plant will end up being like, say, four feet wide, just sprawled out in all different directions. Instead of doing that, we could take four plants and, and plant them in that same four square foot area. So if you allow it to sprawl one plant in a four square foot area, if we stake the tomatoes like we're doing here, we can plant tomatoes every square foot if we, if we want, especially like I do it with the strings. We can plant tomatoes one foot apart and we're using that vertical space. So when we're doing this, it's making it so the tomatoes get more light, more airflow, and are a lot easier to harvest from. So we can get the we can get almost like four different plants in four square feet rather than letting the tomato just sprawl out in every different direction and make like you know six or eight different plants on that one plant the yield ends up being bigger on one plant when you don't remove the suckers but the yield of four plants in the same square foot area ends up being a lot bigger because we're utilizing that space your tomatoes get bigger and you get more rounds of harvesting because if it's something like a cherry tomato the cherry tomatoes form quickly and they ripen quickly so the plant can go from ripening the tomatoes one round of tomatoes to the next one to the next one so it's almost like again you get more rounds of harvests now i'm in the location where i have my tomatoes planted one square foot apart come in here you'll notice we have one two three four tomato plants planted in, this, in a four square foot section. If I was to let them sprawl, I would only be able to fit one tomato plant here. Now I have four. So when we grow like this, we're getting bigger tomatoes that form earlier, ripen quicker, and are higher in vitamin C because they get more actual direct sunlight. So growing tomatoes vertically like this and tying them actually helps um, let us use time to our advantage. So we're using time and space to our advantage because we can get those tomatoes actually quicker. So the only maybe drawback of growing tomatoes like this is that it takes a little bit more work to actually come out, prune them and tie them. But in my opinion, it's completely worth it because the absolute ease of harvest. So as these tomatoes continue to grow up the string, it's so easy to just go by and grab the tomatoes and find them to harvest them. When you let the tomatoes sprawl all over the ground, it's sometimes hard to find the tomatoes. So you might miss a few. And also it's so, they're so much more susceptible to disease. So this way gets us tomatoes that are bigger, earlier, better, and have less susceptibility to any disease issues. So in my opinion, this is the way to go. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I've been growing tomatoes like this for years now. And since I've converted to this style of growing tomatoes, I don't think I'll ever go back. It's so convenient. You get earlier tomatoes and it's just, it's just a beautiful way to do it in my opinion. The system is enjoyable in basically every single way. If you guys enjoyed the video though, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the new spring merch at jamesprigioni.com. It's only gonna be a limited time thing. So you can notice it's getting dark here. It looks like we're gonna have some storms. We're supposed to have some bad weather today, but fortunately we have all of our tomatoes tied nice and we have them coming here. We have a, a piece of wood down here that we're tying our string to. This way, the, the wind won't rip at the root of the tomato. So when the wind's blowing and it pulls at the string, it won't pull at the roots of the tomato, it will pull at the piece of wood at the bottom. That's a little addition that we added this year, and I think it's gonna be extremely helpful. So in my opinion, I can't really think of that many reasons why I wanna tie my tomatoes and prune them. It's just basically convenient in every single way. Tuck hasn't been in the video that much today. Right, Tucky boy? He's been busy doing his own thing. A little earlier it was hotter out, so he was into digging his holes. You'll notice right here, this is one of his favorite locations to dig, to dig his holes. So he likes to dig these deep holes and then lay in them when it's really, when it's really hot out, right boy? But overall, this guy never quits. He's always out here with us. He's not a part of the garden. He's the heart of the garden. So we just love having him be a part of it. We also want to thank our new channel member, Stacy Longo. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for having your hand in the tomatoes we're growing, the early harvest, and thanks for just making what me and Tuck love to do just come all together. So if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure you check out a few more of them. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.